What was the Lorax? And why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere? The old Onceler still lives here. Ask him. He knows. It all started way back. Such a long, long time back. Mister! He said with a sawdusty sneeze. I am the Lorax! I speak for the trees! Oh, there's an axe. He's gonna chop the truffle trees down! Hello, and welcome to another great, amazing book show. Today's story, The Lorax, by Dr. Seuss. It says, The Street of the Lifted Lorax. At the far end of town, where the grickle grass grows and the wind smells slow and sour, ew, when it blows and no birds ever sing excepting old crows, is the street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lorax once stood, just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. This little platform is where the Lorax was. Hey, a cactus. What was the Lorax? And why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere? From the far end of town where the grickle grass grows, the old Onceler still lives here. Ask him. He knows. You won't see the Onceler. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkum on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkum, cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of myth muffered moof. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you, perhaps if you're willing to pay. See, there's the Onceler inside of his lurkin. Lurkin inside his lurkin. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail, and you have to toss in 15 cents and a nail, and the shell of a great, great, great grandfather snail. There he goes. Then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count, to see if you've paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in his snuff, his secret strange hole in his grovulous glove. Then he grunts, I will call you by whisper, my phone, for the secrets I tell are for your ears alone. Slop. Down slops the whisper, my phone, to your ear, and the old Onceler's whispers are not very clear. Since they have to come down through a snurgedly hose, and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says, with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back. Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet. We're going back in time. When the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the swammy swans ran out in space, one morning I came to this glorious place and I first saw the trees, the truffler trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffler trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning. Breeze. Look, there's a swami swan and the truffle a tree and the onceler in his wagon. And under the trees I saw brown barbaloots frisking about in their barbaloot suits as they played in the shade and ate truffly fruits. From the ripidious pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. Humming fish. What would it be like to swim with humming fish underneath you? Would you hear them humming in the water? Or maybe only if you put your ear underwater. I don't know. But those trees, those trees, those truffler trees, all my life had been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk, and they had the sweet smell of fresh buttery milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do, I'd unloaded my cart. 
There he's throwing everything out. Oh, there's an axe. He's gonna chop the truffle of trees down! The Onceslers. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffle tree with one chop. That's an easy tree to chop down. Have you ever chopped down a tree? It's not one chop. Whoa! Oops. And with great skillful skill and with great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft and I knitted a sneed. A, th a sneed. Uh, it sounds like you're holding your nose to say steed. But it's a sneed, and it's like a sweater, except the leg, it's a full body sweater, the leg and the arm are connected. Uh, for one slurs, we don't really know what the rest of their body looks like, we only get to see the gloves. By the author and illustrator Ned, who took it upon himself to show us what a one slur appears like in the skin. As you can see, there's a hole in the head, two of them. Not in the nostrils, no. Uh, two holes for one for an arm, one for a leg. Very useful. Uh, and this is what wears a thneed. But that's a barbaloot looking at that thneed. The instant I'd finished, I heard a gazump. I looked. I saw something pop out of the stump of the tree I'd chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him? That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. It's the Lorax. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze. I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you've made out of my truffle a tuft? Look, Lorax, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a need. A need to find something that all people need. It's a shirt. It's a sock. It's a glove. It's a hat. But it has other uses, yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, Sir, you're a crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that fool's need. He's got a need by the thread. But the very next minute I proved he was wrong. For just at that moment a chap came along, and he thought that the need I had knitted was great. Not knitted, knitted. He thought that the need I had knitted was great. He happily bought it for three ninety eight. That's a lot of money. Three ninety eight. That's one, two, three dollars, and then we have quarters. One, two, three. That's twenty five, fifty, seventy five cents, and then two dimes. That's ten, twenty cents. So eighty five, ninety five cents, and then the pennies. One, two, three. That's ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight cents. Three ninety eight. That's how you count that. I laughed at the Lorax. You poor stupid guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. <laughs> the Barbaloots can't believe it. Somebody's walking off with a thneed. He's got two legs and two arms. What's he going to do with the connected sleeve? I don't know. I repeat, cried the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I'm busy. Oh, not Lorax. One slur. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up, if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts and I said, Listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wonsler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast. Take the road to North Niche. Turn left a wee hawking, sharp right at South Stitch. And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Wansla family was working full tilt. We were all knitting needs, just as busy as bees, bzz, 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 to the sound of the chopping of truffle trees. Hack, whack, chop, chop. Oh, boy. 
Then, oh baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker, which whacked off four truffle trees at one smacker. We are making needs four times as fast as before. And that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. Four truffle trees at once. That is efficiency. But the next week he knocked on my new office door. It says, the once lure in chief, private. That means don't knock on this door. He snapped, I'm the Lorax who speaks to the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown barbaloots, who played in the shade in their barbaloot suits and happily lived eating truffula fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffula fruit to go around. And my poor baby barbaloots are all getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. Oh, the poor barbaloots. They're so hungry. What should they do? They loved living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food. And I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the onceler, felt sad as I watched them all go. But business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. Wow. Needs. It's a giant factory. You needeth need. You needeth need. North, west, south, and east. I meant no harm, most truly did not. But I had to grow bigger, so I bigger I got. I bigger my factory, I bigger my roads, I bigger my wagons, I bigger my loads. Of the sneeds I shipped out, I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more sneeds, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again he came back, I was fixing some pipes. When the old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax, he coughed and he whiffed. He sneezed and he snuffled. He snarled, he sniffed. Onceler, he cried with a cruffless croak. Onceler, you're making such smokeless smoke. <coughs> My poor swami swans. They can't sing a note. No one can sing who has <coughs> smog in his throat. <coughs> Those poor swami swans, they've got smog in their throats. And so, said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. <coughs> they cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you smogged up around here. There they all go. Those poor swami swans. Please help our channel grow. Hit the like button. What's more, snapped the Lorax. His dander was up. Let me say a few words about Globity Glop. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop, making Globity Glop also sloppy slop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old one slum and you. There's the gloppity glop or the sloppity slop. Maybe the green one's the sloppity slop and the yellow one's the gloppity glop. But there's onceslers all round with their green gloves a glowing and they're putting all the sloppity slop into pails and buckets of who knows what. You're glumping the pond where the humming fish hummed. No more can they hum for the gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off. All their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. Oh, the smeary waters of the glubbity glub schlubbity schlop cesspool. The humming fish are humming their way, humming away in the green fields of the schlubbity schlop. We can't live in it, it's too hummity hum. 
That's not what they would say. They'd say, because <laughs> fish don't talk, they only hum. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap yap and say bad, 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 bad. Well, I have my rights, sir. And I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering and biggering and biggering. Turning more truffle trees into thneeds, which everyone, everyone needs. Oh no. All of the trees are gone. Except one. And... And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From the outside in the fields came a sickening smack. Oh. Hey. That wasn't a library book, was it? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Of an axe on a tree, when I heard the tree fall. The very last truffle tree of them all. Should have planted some truffle trees, are you? I'm bored. Bored? Plant a truffle a tree! Don't plant them in the house! Truffle seeds, water not included. And think about it. No more trees, no more needs, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone, all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke smuggled stars. Now all that was left neath the bad smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax, and I. They're all waving goodbye as they leave. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance. Just gave me a very sad, sad backward glance as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of the place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. <laughs> and all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with the one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago. But each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried the way. Through the years, while well, my buildings have fallen apart. We're talking through that schluff thing again. I've worried about it with all of my heart. <clears throat> but now, says the once, says the onceler, now that you're here, words of the Lorax seem perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot. Nothing is going to get better. It's not. And up goes the schluff, and down comes the seed. So catch, calls the onceler. He lets something fall. It's a truffle seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of that last of the truffle seeds. And truffle trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffle. Treat it with care. Give it clean water and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest. Protect it from axes that hack. Then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. We do hope you've enjoyed this great, amazing book show. And if you'd like to listen to further titles, please check out our other videos. Or subscribe and continue to enjoy more of these fascinating stories.